So when we think about the Exodus story in general, I think it always challenges me. Why did the people want to leave? What was their first request? So if you think the answer is freedom, I invite you to raise your hand at this time. Who thinks that, the, that Moses' first request to Pharaoh was freedom? Okay, a handful of people, okay. Well, Moses' actual request wasn't freedom. His actual request was, let my people go worship in the wilderness. He didn't even say where. He simply said, I would like to be able to worship God in the wilderness the way I'd like to be able to worship God in the wilderness with my people, with me over here. And Pharaoh's response, of course, was, no, I'm not interested in letting you go. I shall not let you go. I feel like I'm about to sing a queen song. Let me go. I shall not let you go. Let me go. I shall not let you go. And this went on and on and on, as we all know, for multiple requests, 10 in fact, where every single time Moses comes down and says, please let me go. And Pharaoh says, I will not let you go. And it goes back and forth. But let's think about this because it actually, I think, teaches us a really deep lesson about what does it mean when we make a decision and how do we decide we're going to do something different and make a change with our life. So let's think about that just for a second. Moses' first request was, I'd like to go worship. I wanna go do something different. I'm, I'm not even clear where and I don't know how, but I know that I'm, I'm out and I'm gonna make this request from you, Pharaoh, to let all of your free labor come with me. And every single time Moses goes back to Pharaoh, it's like he gets some clarification. So it's not just that he's going to go worship. Ultimately, he goes and figures out he's going to go to a specific location. He knows that he's not just going to go in the wilderness. He's going to go to a mountain in the wilderness, Mount Sinai. And it's not just that he's going to go worship, but he knows that when he gets there, everyone's going to have to be purified. Everyone's going to have to separate themselves and be clear of what they're going to eat and be kind to their body and wash their clothes. After all, we want to be ritually pure and clean and maybe even good smelling when we approach God. And so Moses does this with the people and he creates a process and a plan to get them ready too. And then he goes up the mountain for God. So we learn that part of the thing was not just he figures out the location, but he answers the question of how. And the next thing that Moses does, which again is fascinating when he requests to be let go, is he requests that his people be able to be let go from slavery. Oftentimes when we think about challenging problems and situations, we want to have freedom from oppression. We want to allow ourselves no longer to be burdened by X, Y, and Z. We demand it but we don't exactly know how to get there. We kind of sit there and toil. And I'm sure some of us have even come up with plans and to-do lists, but it doesn't quite happen. And we've learned, I'm sure, if you've paid attention to some of this health help talks that have been going on recently in the past decade or so, they talk about dream boards or vision boards as a part of that process. So when you think about it this way, Moses was able to use his clarity that he gained by having all of those interactions with Mo, with um, Pharaoh, excuse me, to craft that vision of what freedom was going to be. It wasn't just that the people were no longer going to be enslaved. That wasn't either what he was after. What he was ultimately after was for the people to be created as a people. He wanted them to become the people of Israel so that it wasn't just one or two things that he was after, but in fact, he crafted an entire vision board of worship, of ritual, and ultimately identity formation with which um, the trip through Egypt and out of Egypt and into the wilderness was going to grant them and gift them. And so we see it's sometimes 
that we know we want to change. We know we want something different in our life. Maybe if you think about it, you haven't been quite happy in 2021. Well, frankly, who's been happy in 2021? There's been this thing called the pandemic that's kind of kiboshed a lot of our plans. But maybe there have been other things that have come up for you too that you know, ah, I want to change. I want to have my 2022 year be, well, I want to be a little thinner. Or I want to be a little bit more fit and in shape. How do I get from point A to point B? How do I make the de go from making a decision to turning it into an action? And so if we look at the model that's portrayed in the book of Exodus, of Moses and Pharaoh's interactions being just that, interactions, where Moses really comes and says, I want to do X, and Pharaoh pushes against and, say, and pushes against and pushes against. Each time that Moses comes back, he finally gets not just clarification, but confidence to be able to go into the unknown, be able to move from point A to point B, be able to lead a people. If we recall pretty early on in the book of Exodus, we remember Moses began this whole process not even able to speak, not even able to articulate very much. He struggled. In fact, it was God who told him, Aaron is going to speak for you. And so we think and we see this, Moses went from being almost inarticulate, almost not having a vision, not having confidence, not knowing how to having the whole um, 10 plagues as a process of discernment, gaining confidence and choosing a path to lead. It kind of offers for us a model of how we can make that change in 2022 awesome and possible. Part of it, I think, has to do with where do we want to be? How do we want to be? And creating that vision board, creating that path so that we can get from point A to point B successfully. And so that when we arrive at point B, we're able to look around and realize this is where we belong. This is what we've been intending to become. This is what we've been intending to do. So may you be inspired by Moses's journey, not looking at the 10 plagues like, oh my God, these 10 plagues were a burden. These challenges, these obstacles that I face are a burden. I don't know what to do, but look at them as the gift that they can be. The gift of clarification, the gift of giving confidence, the gift of understanding who you are and to make that vision board the best vision board to give yourself the idea of how to go from point A to point B and, well, to let my people go a little bit and get moving and get grooving into 2022. Shabbat Shalom.